Hey guys, it's Nick again, and I actually just got back from Washington DC. Yeah, I was there for a school trip, and it was a lot of fun, but I am back now, and I'm ready for some more Doki Doki, so let's just freaking jump and do it. Alright. Oh, hold on. Okay. Right. Oh man, I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and picking and now picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival too. It's gonna be great! Were you complaining about it just yesterday, Nazuki? Well, yeah! I'm not talking about our part of the festival, but the whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Theory all of a sudden. <clears throat> America, do they usually have fight squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on! Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? Huh? I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because! It's right in your name! Monica! Huh? That's not how you say my name at all! Also, that bit Jake makes no sense in translation! Ah, <laughs> uh, that's pretty good. Alright. Alright. Oh, uh, never mind. Yeah, because Ika means squid, right? Is that what it is? Yeah. I don't think Mon means anything. I don't know. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? <coughs> fine, fine. Your reactions are as fun as your interest in already anyway. Excuse me. Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I whip my hand in front of her face. You're alive? No. Okay. Huh? You're spacing out again. <laughs> yeah, I'm um, sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Uh, of course! Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Gee, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, T. Siri shows me a big smile. <laughs> Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so. I weirdly glance at Sayori before turning back towards everyone else. But the conversation is already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Nick, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica appears across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there is something on her mind, but I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Nick. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about the things that bothered her. But this time, when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know. Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Yeah? Are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Oh, also, I forgot. 
uh, I have my game files open now, because I'm- I think this might be the episode where there's stuff that goes into here. I'm not sure, though. Um, and also, just be warned, um, depending on how far I get in this episode, it might get a little heavy. So, just be aware of that. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with a person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Nick. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? <laughs> because she's my sayo-yo, okay? You know? Freaking dummy. My character is an idiot sometimes. Sometimes it's really smart, sometimes it's an idiot. Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but... Siri talks about you more than anything else, you know? Eh? She's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sherry is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now that it always has been. <laughs> you're so funny, Nick. Have you thought that maybe you're, you've always seen her uh, so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you? Um. Ah, I, I said too much. I'm sorry. What do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Ah. Oh. Alright. Monica smiled meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her. But she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else. But that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. There's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Alright. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Oh, that early? Oh, so nothing happened. Well, I guess since I wrote my poem for Sayori, and Sayori's down the dumps today, nothing's gonna happen with her, so... Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Alright. I think I'll go to Sayori first, because I because she leaves early today, so I want to make sure I get to see hers and show her mine. This is your best one so far. It's really, really nice, Nick. Er, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, Sayori, you've been a little quiet today. Is everything alright? <laughs> of course! Everything is fine! Maybe I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Do you want a nap or something? No, that's silly. Don't worry about me, okay? I only want to see smiles in your face. Well, alright. Hey, Nick. I'm still a little surprised. I really thought that you would try writing your poems like the way Yuri does. Or even Natsuki. But in the end, yeah, I guess you're the one who likes this one the most. Why? You know why I get closer with everyone else? Wait, of course I do. But that doesn't mean I need to try so hard to impress them. I still understand you the most, Sayori. I know you have to sometimes put up with me. And I have to sometimes put up with you. But we have a wavelength or something. And this is how the poem came out. Sometimes it feels like you're the only one exciting, you're the only exciting thing in my life. So sometimes it's just easier to write when thinking about you. Oh, that feels sweet. Sayori? No, no. Nick. I don't deserve this. Yeah, you do, Sayori. Sayori, you're my sweetie. You totally deserve it. You're the best. You're the best, Sayori. Mm. You're doing nice to me. Why are you doing this? Siri has tr trouble keeping her voice steady all of a sudden. If you have fun with everyone else's head, 
this would be so much easier. Siri. I glance around the room to make sure nobody has noticed this. Siri. I've probably never said this before, but I don't understand what you're feeling right now. Tell me what will cheer you up. Siri shakes her head. She sniffles and keeps shaking her head. Finally, she gathers herself and puts on a smile. It's nothing yet. It's just a little rain cloud. I'm sorry I had to see that. <laughs> I promise it won't happen again. Just smiles from everyone, okay? That's all that matters. Go play with everyone else. I wanna go home a little bit early today. Siri. Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Siri truthfully walks out of the classroom humming to herself. Oh no. Yeah, so it's gonna get a little heavy later on. So just be warned of that. Who should I show my poem to next? Um, I'm gonna go with Yuri. But Yuri doesn't look too enthusiastic about spending time with me. No. I guess if she changes her mind, she'll come to me. But I should leave her be for now. Why? Why don't I get to see Yuri's poems? Alright, you know what? Fine, that's good. This one's alright. Alright. Yeah, although I was good yesterday's anyway. I see what you're going for, but it's just not really my style. I mean, that's fine. I'm mostly just glad that you're trying a, a little bit. Well, of course I'm at least trying. Why are you so emotionally invested in my poems anyway? Isn't that more of a compliment to me? Eh? eh no! Gross! It's not like I care. It's just that one of us in this club has to make sure you're not slacking off. Really? Well, what if you ended up just scaring me out, uh, scaring me away? That's... um... It's not like you would actually do that. Yeah, you're right. It's kind of fun to hang out here, even if I have to put up with you. Good. Natsuki's elbow connects with my stomach. Yeah! Whatever. mind scaring you away after all. I was just joking. Oh, I know. Don't worry, I waste you. <laughs> How the hell did you call that a joke? That seriously hurt. Well, maybe it's funny to her. I guess that's kind of the point. I should really just watch my mouth around Natsuki. Anyway, Natsuki holds out her poem to me like nothing even happened. I'll be your bitch. I mean, beach. <sighs> your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminished your wonder over the years, but today I have a special place, a beach for us to go. A shore reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles with brilliant light. The walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. This seems like it'd be a song. I'll be the beat that makes your heart leap in a way that thought you left you long ago. Alright, that's enough singing. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand. Bathe in sunbeams and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities by the, in the salty sea. And let me see you shine. Shine bright like a diamond. Oh, fuck, copyright. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail. Set you free in my windy sail. And remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. Natsuki, not interested. Not interested, Natsuki. I'll be the bitch. The beach. Damn it, that's the second time. Are you kidding? That washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought you had left, had left you long ago. It's a hard line to read. But if you let me be by your side. Your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. Cool. Yeah, I felt like I kept worrying about negative things, so I wanted to write something with a nice message for once. Besides, the beach is awesome. Kinda hard to write anything negative about the beach. So you decided to write about the beach first, and then come up with a message later? Yeah, well, it's only because of what happened yesterday. 
I mean, after hearing I realized we kind of wrote about the same thing. She wanted to pick a topic and have us both write about it, or whatever. I see. I don't really have much to contribute here, since I didn't actually read Yuri's poem. Oh, you can really see you're doing that too. You can just write about a simple topic, then try to impress me by coming up with something all fancy. Well, it's not like I care. I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up being kind of metaphorical too. But there's nothing wrong with doing that once in a while. At the very least, it was good practice. Okay, time for Monica. <laughs> Hi, Nick. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people? I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever I do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see you. <laughs> anyway, let's go look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. <laughs> it's kind of funny. How so? No, not the poem. I mean, it's funny how your poems and serious poems have been getting more and more similar to each other every day. I'm surprised you're so in sync with her. Then again, you've been spending a lot of time together lately, haven't you? Ah, I guess you could say that. Although we kind of grew up as best friends, I haven't been seeing her as much. I haven't seen been seeing as much of her this past year. <laughs> but since I joined the club, we've been spending a lot of time together again. I see, I see. That reminds me about how Sarah's been a little bit off today. Yeah, did she tell you something? Ah, uh, well, Nick, you haven't been flirting with her, have you? Uh, of course not. I've been treating her like I always do. Just making sure. I know how much you care about her. It would be terrible if something bad happened to her, so keep an eye on her. You bitch. Stop. Sarah's been acting so much happier ever since you joined the club. What could have happened all of a sudden? Well, never mind. This really isn't the time to be talking about this. Anyway. I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Er, alright. The lady who knows everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. A lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather, lost adrift in the sky, a victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day, I search, I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all, is all that remains, the last dim star glimmering, glimmering in the twilight sky. Twilight, alright, fuck me again. Until one day, the wind ceases to blow, I fall, I, I fall and fall and fall even more, gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There's no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend, your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. Alright, so this one's also about Monica, and now she knows everything. So, yeah. Whatever. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers and the sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything. Oh, hold on. But it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put that much thought into it. In a way, in a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, would the world start to lose its meaning? Yeah, I guess so. Alright. You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. Uh huh? Are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Huh, yeah, that. 
getting a little bit weird there, Monica. My chair is being stupid. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid that it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put it so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Alright guys, so there was a, a little bit of a cut there. Uh, I had to go to the bathroom, but I didn't want to include it on camera, so... Alrighty. So... Alright. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good, or okay, or bad, you'll want to focus more on everything that went into it, and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way, and it will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Here, this looks a little crooked. Hold on. Alright, there you go. You guys are better now. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Alrighty. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out... Hold on a second. Is it, is it just me, or you say something strange just now? Eh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. Oh, uh, that's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the literature club. C catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Geez! Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Ugh. Stagnant here is coming, foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Yeah, I honestly don't know what catchphrase they're talking about. If you if you realize if you recognize that, then put it down in the comments because I I'd, I'd love to know what they're talking about. Ah, it seems you're right. <sighs> Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's bounce is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on! Uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? A lot of time not to go home with her. You pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovey dovey. Uh, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. Oh, whoops. No, I didn't want to hit that. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Ooh. Nice owl, Yuri. That curious expression coming from Yuri, of all people? Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier, and everything is fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out what's in the festival preparations, so... Way to skate on by that, Monica. Not even... You didn't even try to be subtle or anything. You didn't try to be smooth, nothing like that. You were just like, nah, fuck that. We're done. Decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes. But we might need a lot of them in different flavors. Can you handle all that by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. And as for myself, I'm going to be putting and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sherry will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri. Yuri, you can. Uh, um. Hmm? Guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I... I'm useless. No, you're not! But no! That's not me at all! You're the most talented person here, you know? Mm hmm? No, not so spotting too. Jeez, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Siri enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Huh. That may be the case. I can also be a leader of my own, and I won't grow as a person. So, Mary, you have beautiful handwriting, you know? Maybe you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that, I... I love atmosphere. <laughs> I freaking love atmosphere so much. Let me tell you about it. There's, there's the troposphere, and then there's the stratosphere, and then there's the 
mesosphere. And then there's the thermosphere. And then there's technically the exosphere. Exosphere. Atmosphere is pretty cool, man. It's pretty freaking dope. Mary's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. <laughs> Alright. Your mind's already racing, I see. That's great! You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Nick. The one who is truly useless. Ha! You got it! <laughs> Don't say that! In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I would be really appreciative of that. Oh, uh, that's... Is Monica, su is Monica suggesting that I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Uh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give to you. It's not like Monica's gonna give me a choice, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. You did. Natsuki, you 100% did say that. Nick may not like to be around you if you only make him out to be a nuisance. So therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on! I never said that! Yes, you did, Natsuki. You 100% did. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Nick to- What are you saying? It will be extremely meticulous work. Bacon isn't? Just what do you think? Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. <clears throat> In the end, I think it's up to Nick to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in- well, Literally just said- I I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying, though. Jeez! You just said all this already. Yeah. Nick, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Uh, of course. <laughs> Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. And of course, I'm going to go with. You know, we gotta go with Sayori. I mean, if it's going to be anyone, then I'd prefer helping Sayori. I mean, we're already neighbors, and. But Monica said. Monica said that Sayori was having her. Jeez, you really hate us that much. N no. Sorry, I didn't mean for this to be difficult. Just think of the club, okay? Um, definitely not Monica. I think I'm gonna go with Yuri, because she thinks I hate her, and I wanna show that I don't hate her. Um. And. I don't know. And Natsuki did say she, she wanted to do it by herself, so I'm gonna go with Yuri. Well, I'll probably be most useful in helping Yuri out. But me? Are you serious? Why would you- Natsuki, I can already tell you're about to say something mean. No! I was just saying- Ugh. So, you'll be helping Yuri, Nick? Yeah. <clears throat> That's what I'm going to do. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sorts of things, so I think your assistance will be very useful. That's good to hear. Natsuki, will you be able to handle the baking yourself? I mean, yeah. I already said I would be fine. See, you did say it. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Everyone can tell that Natsuki is feeling a little sour. So, is that everything we need to go over? Yeah, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Well, excited may, may not be the right word, but I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. Do you feel the same way, Nick? Me? Uh, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Natsuki? Uh, Natsuki? What? Why are you even yelling at me? I didn't even do anything! <clears throat> no, that's not what I meant at all. Very anxiously glances between everyone in the room. I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Nick picked me. And also, your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They go really well with my tea. And nothing I, that I do for the event will compare to that, so... So... I get it, I get it. I'm kind of surprised, though. But why? <clears throat> um, well, I'm no 
the one acting immature. I already know that. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I know I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken aback by Yuri's words. Oh my god! Okay. That's pretty, that's pretty gay. When she already has trouble with words, trying to cheer someone up must be far out of her own comfort zone. But I begin to understand. <clears throat> Yuri is trying to sound like Yuri. Even if it didn't work out perfectly, I can tell she tried to say something Siri would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No! I kinda appreciated it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing. <clears throat> but I'm gonna say this. Hmm? You better bet that my cupcakes are gonna be the best part of the whole event! <clears throat> my voice is going a little bit. Uh, I believe you. Yeah, I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. Alright, let's get out of here then. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Natsuki out the door as they chat between each other. Has anything gone into here yet? No. Uh, um, eh? I turn around. Sorry. I realize that I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Oh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way, yes. Alright then. Yuri and I exchange phone numbers. Okay. Then, I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Eh? My house? Is, is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought that I would be the one going to your house, since I'm the one helping you. I suppose that makes sense, but if you don't mind, then I think I would prefer going to your house. Alright, in that case, it won't be a problem. I decided not to press Yuri for a reason. It's not like it should matter much either way, so I'll just need to make sure my room is clean. I hope I managed to make myself useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Don't underestimate- don't- yeah, don't underestimate yourself, Nick. I think that will make a very productive team. Even if you only choose, chose me because you felt bad or something. Wait! You don't actually think that, do you? I don't know. It's... It's pretty true. It's difficult to come up with any other reason you may have chosen me. You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I want to do. But... but Yuri thinks to herself an extremely tense expression. Yuri... You're overthinking this. You wanted me to point out when you're overthinking, right? Huh? I didn't realize. I'm telling you, I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? I... He thinks really hard again. She looks straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. As if it took her tremendous effort, Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. And I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah. I am too. After that exchange, I make my way out of the door, and Yuri follows. Alrighty. I can't believe this. Yuri is going to be coming to my house on Sunday? Even though I thought I would have preferred to do this with Sayori. My anxiety still shoots through the roof. I guess I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point. But who knows what might end up happening when we're outside of school. She even told me she was looking forward to it. I shook my head. Why do I feel nervous that Sayori finds out about this? It's not like we feel that way about each other. Besides, like Monica said, this is about the club. I have nothing to worry about. If I just go with it, then I'll have a good time. Alrighty. Anything yet? Nope. It's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Alright, I'm going to end this after the end of this day. Actually, no. I'll do it at the end of tomorrow, because tomorrow is a really important day. So, alright. Let's do this. Yuri's clearly an introvert and also an intimate person in general. There's no doubt she'll open up a bit when it's just the two of us. Just the two of us. Alright, enough singing. Spend too much singing this time. Meanwhile, we've even been texting occasionally. 
She was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. By putting Yuri aside, but putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard it. I haven't heard a thing from Sayori since she left the club early the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? Alright. I decide to visit Sayori before Yuri comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were a family. The house is quiet. Sari isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom, where I finally find her. Sari? Hi, Nick! I sit down in her room. Sari forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Uh, I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Siri's room is as messy as it's always been. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for years now. <laughs> if you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Yuri today? Yeah, but... Wait, how do you know about that? Sorry, I'd already left by the time we decided that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Oh, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course! But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Oh, so it's just me and Yuri then. Yep. There's more silence between us. Siri stands, stares in a random direction. Everything about our behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday, when something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So, Siri smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Nick. Eh? Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and actually express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have been thinking about me right now. But this, this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over there. It just wants to torture me. <laughs> Sorry. I grab Sarah by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Ah. <laughs> Siri gives me an empty smile. You only put me in a trap, Nick. You've activated my trap card, Pot of Greed. This card allows me to draw two new cards and add them to my hand. I'm sorry, this is a serious part. I'm just trying to make a joke out of it. Alright. But, you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? <laughs> you really just gotta make me say it, aren't you, Nick? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. No. Oh, say, oh. Yo! This is Monica's fault. <laughs> Did you know that? Why do you think I might to school every day? Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy. Without everyone worry about me. But I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Siri kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me to just think to just not think about her? Why, Siri? Huh? Why is it that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much that I could do, 
I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand. Oh, you don't understand at all, Nick. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but also feels like a bat being thrown against my head. Ahahaha. <laughs> That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get close with everyone else in the club, it feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why, that's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. Ha ha ha. You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Siri. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Nick. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing I could have helped is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Sarah's face. Oh. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. I know you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Love thinking, I once again grab Sarah's shoulders. This time I pull her into a tight embrace. <laughs> Nick. Siri. I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then it's, that's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Nick? Sarah isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sarah's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No. Don't do this to me. Please don't do this. Nick? I... Siri barely, barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. But all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything that you need me to do, then you'd better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Siri finally puts her arms around me in return. No. Oh. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Nick. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm. And that's really scary, too. Siri lets me go. As she does, as she does so, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would, you, how would you like for me to spend it all with you? Uh, um, ah. Uh, it's what I want. I promise. I... I think that would be nice then. Yeah. Sorry about your eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But, it's almost time for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It'd be fun. To my surprise, Sherry shakes her head. Yeah, she should also help out Monica. I'm sorry. I don't know if that'd be very good for me today. You understand, right? Uh, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand. But I'm trying my hardest. That's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Alright. I'll look for I look forward to it. Oh no I say oh re Huh, get it say oh re. Alright, you know what? That's enough. I say goodbye to Sarah next to her house. On the way home I find myself still feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri's about to come over too. I think Sayori's right. 
I shouldn't be worrying too much, and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. As I approach my house, I see something that makes, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Yuri? Ah! Thank goodness! You're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Wait. Were you waiting for a long time? No, I just got here. But I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You always could have texted me. If I had known, I would have reassured you and hurried more on my way home. Ah, uh, I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decided to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. <coughs> ah. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. At least, I hope I got everything right. I'm sure it will be fine. I take Yuri to my room. The first thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. <laughs> I cleaned it before you came over, so... That's very considerate of you to do. Ah, uh, no. It would be really, I would be really embarrassed for my room to be a mess with you here. Hmm. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. I would have gladly helped you clean. Ah! That would be even more embarrassing. Wait, don't look in there! <laughs> I snatched Yuri's wrist, which was in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. What's... what's in there, bud? <laughs> I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just facing out. It's fine, it's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrist. She puts both her hands firmly in her lap, as if making sure she's keeping track of them. Alright, you stay here, and you stay here. Lefty and righty, you guys need to calm down, okay? You're getting a little feisty there. So, um, should we get started? Uh, yes. Um, I have a few things planned that you can help with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements? You know, mood lighting, aromatherapy, uh, aromatherapy candles. Oh wow, I didn't know you planned on taking it that far. Of course, I want to help take our guests to a faraway place. Although many will stop by just out of curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess. I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great. It's easy, it's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Uh... Intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It's something that I like about you, actually. Is that so? It makes me feel relieved. I'm kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be so anxious. You can relax a little. Relax. I brought some things for relaxation. It's like, oh, relax. I brought things for relaxation. Look, here, relax things. We can do relax with them. Ha 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 ha. It's your bot. It's the Yuri bot. 9000. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah? Like what? Let's see. Let me rummage this through her bag. She pulls out a few candles and a wooden cylinder shaped object. I did some shopping on the way here, so I happen to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in black paper and use the candles to light the room. I think that would be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that would be really neat. Ha, <laughs> that's pretty neat. Oh, what? I didn't read that line. Oh, this? It's a diffuser for, for essential oils. How familiar are you with aromatherapy? Not familiar at all. Ah, is that so? It's one of my favorite contributors to a positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even feel it permeate through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Yuri takes the cylinder and pushes the switch on the bottom. In just a moment, a thin ray of vapor begins to spout through a small hole in the top. <laughs> yes, bro. Wow, that smells wonderful. What kind of mood is that one for? This is Jasmine Essential Oil. It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. Definitely. Oh. 
Frick. Alright. I chose Jasmine for the event because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and helps you feel them flow through your body. You feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavily. Don't you think that will be perfect for sharing our poems? It does sound suitable. But you seem to know a lot about this, so I'll trust your opinion, if anything. Yuri smiles gently, clearing it, clearly enjoying herself. She again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are those for? Well, did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? Yeah, I have it over here. We won't be using the paper for folding origami. What I'd like to do is write a different word on each paper. We'll need about a hundred of them. Oh yeah? What will those be used for? Well, I'm going to cut pieces of ribbon to hang from the doorway of the classroom. Then we can fasten the paper onto the ribbon to create a doorway or curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? It would also catch the eye of those passing by the room. It may attract them to peek inside. That's really creative. I had no idea you'd be so good at this, Yuri. Is that so? Well, I suppose I do get a little intense, as you'd put it. <laughs> Yuri giggles with red cheeks. Is it just me, or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? Or maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something that she re-enjoys. Here's a marker, Nick. You can write any characters you want. Oh. Oh, I got confused for a second characters. I forgot this is supposed to be Japanese. Ah, uh, okay. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbons. Ah, alright. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. I carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to manage my bad handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon to her desired length. Then she reaches into her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Calm down there a little bit, Yuri. Yeah, stop that. Yeah? The knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle has an intricate pattern of waves etched into it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. Uh, uh. Well. Embarrassed, Yuri looks away. What is it? You're going to think it's weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. To each their own, you know. If you promise you won't be weirded out. Yeah, I promise. Alright. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. Whoa, you're a little bit more than into knives, Yuri. I know your story. I know your shtick. They're just so pretty. I can't help it. I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmanship and feeling of danger, maybe. Ooh, what am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. <laughs> You're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. <laughs> it's just funny how nervous you get about sharing. <laughs> it's, well, it's an interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. <laughs> Besides, it's a really cool looking knife, I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Here he relaxes her expression once again. Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Yuri carefully hands me the knife with the handle facing me. I take it and turn it around in my hands. It feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? Yuri is out of its sharpness, I feel the point of the knife in my index finger. Ow! Nick! Why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. It's my fault. I should have warned you. This knife is extremely, extremely sharp. It can cut through skin like it's paper. You would know a lot about that, wouldn't you, Yuri? Oh no. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Ah. She stares at it and noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Uh-uh. Without warning, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth and licks the wound. That's how you get an infection, okay? There's a lot of bacteria in your mouth. You don't go around sticking people's fingers in your mouth. Okay, Yuri. Stop trying to get me sick. She's trying to kill me. She hates me. She's trying to kill me. She's like, you touched my knife? There, infection. Ah. Now you're gonna die, you. You're gonna die, bitch. Alright. I feel her tongue curl around my finger. Jesus Christ, can you stop? Startled, I instinctively pull my hand back. Get the- Get- Better get off of there, I'm about to go disinfect this with bleach. I'm gonna drink some of it. Damn. Uh-oh. 
but please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I... Yuri lowers her head and lowers her head for her face burning up. Yuri. That's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How could I do something like that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, sure, it's a little weird, and it took me by surprise. But I guess she's just trying to help, right? Yuri, I think you're overreacting a little. Uh -huh. She doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this for the rest of the afternoon? Alright, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I do it anyway. I take Yuri's hand and lick her index finger and turn. You people need to stop, okay? Why licking fingers? Stop licking fingers. You, you're gross, and you need Jesus. Okay. Nick, d did you really just do that? Are you judging me now? Yuri, you literally just did the same thing, okay? Are you gonna judge me for that? Jesus. N now we're even. I'm stuttering. Yuri just looks at me like I did something wrong. <laughs> I knew it would be a bad idea. If not for the sweet aroma of jasmine oil, the air would be extremely happy right now. You're so weird, Nick. Yuri got giggles shyly. Yuri, are you seriously judging me? You're like, ha, you're so weird. You literally just did the same thing, okay? Jesus. And I know I said I wasn't going to judge, but the whole end of knives thing, it's a little weird, okay? Jesus Christ. Eh? Yuri calling me weird? Yeah, exactly! See? Even my character agrees, and he's pretty stupid. I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Ah. I don't think I need one, actually. It was a tiny cut. Look, it already stopped bleeding. See? See, look. I, I see. That's relieving. The tension is quickly lifted. We each resume our respective activities. You're just gonna... You're just gonna go right on by that one. Just like, skeet, skeet on by. Nobody cares that we just licked each other's fingers. Number two, his knife cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue to make progress on the paper. After we finish attaching the paper to the ribbons, we lay them all out side by side. It looks better than I expected and will be very effective as a door curtain. It looks great. Good thing in coming up with this, Yuri. Ah, uh, thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy the paint tablets. Ah, that's right. One of the items Yuri had me asked me. One of the items Yuri had asked me to buy was a kit of watercolor paint tablets. We'll need about six cups of water to put each of the tablets into. Do you mind fetching those for us? I feel like that's not how you use watercolor, but okay. At least that's not how we use in art class. Of course not. Six cups of water. I'll be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Jesus Christ. My nose is itchy. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. If you fill the cups too much, it'll be too diluted. Taking your advice, I decided to use small plastic bathroom cups rather than full-size glasses. I put them on a plate to catch any paint that drips, and then bring them back to my, and bring it back to my room. Yuri? Yes? I come in to see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleeve, put it, pulling it back over her arm. Oh, come on. Oh. Why you do this to me, game? Stop it. I know Yuri is cutting yourself. Okay. Ah, nothing. Your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or anything? Ah, no, not at all. There's nothing wrong, so let's mix the paint. Yuri hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dropping them into the cup. So, I thought we could do something simple that would look very nice. Very nice. I'd like to paint a gradient across the banner. Starting with the colors for sunrise, then daytime, then sunset, and nighttime. Once it dries, I'll write an inspirational quote across the banner. We can hang it onto the wall behind the podium in front of the classroom. Ah, neat. <laughs> That's pretty neat. You guys ever seen that? The Nature Walk series? It's pretty good. If you haven't seen it, you should go watch it. But, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty neat. Hey, that's pretty good. What are you going to write? Well, it'll be more fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me. If you say so, 
After rolling out the banner, Yuri and I kneel on our side so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri uses a brush and adds a few dots of different colors across the banner to serve as a color guide when we paint. This kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner with watercolors feels a lot like the art class projects we had back then. It's relaxing. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry if this feels too childish. No, I didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know? Yeah. It is fun. I'm glad you feel that way, too. Yuri stops painting for a moment, thinking to herself. For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. I just like it when I can spend time with one other person. Even if it's something simple, like reading, it doesn't even matter if we don't talk much. Just having a friend next to me makes me feel a little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if you're uh, quite different, I can understand wh where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games, where simply sharing the experience with someone can make me happy. I think I feel the same way. <clears throat> Yuri smiles gently. I knew you would understand. Yuri leans over the banner to grab an unused paintbrush. But I move at the same time, causing my head to bump into hers. <laughs> Badonk. Gah! <laughs> That's such an anime sound. S sorry. Yuri reels back and I quickly lift my hands in surprise. <gasps> oh no! Are you hurt? No, I'm not hurt. It just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I shouldn't have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Ah, your face. It's so ugly. <laughs> no, Yuri, you're cute. You're a cutie. There are droplets of paint on Yuri's face and neck. Is there something on my face? Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel right away. I rush out and fetch a small towel, then I damp it with hot water. I turn to my room and I kneel back, down in front of her. Here. I pat down Yuri's face and neck with a towel. Ah! Is something wrong? It's hot. I just didn't expect it. Sorry. I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to attract my hand. But Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. <laughs> Wait. Eh? Just for a little longer. And you were calling me weird. Bro, you better stop. It feels really nice. Ah. I keep my hand still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eyes. An intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books. Almost as if she's lost in a daze and enveloped by her own thoughts. She breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. What is happening? Is it the aroma of jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling? Yuri's gentle fingers wrapped around my wrist send a tingling sensation through my arm. And suddenly, her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Ah! Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry. I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean this face out. It's fine. The moment, is the moment is over as soon as it began. Yuri picks up her brush again. But her movements seem clumsier like she's unable to focus. I remain silent, forced to ignore the event that just transpired. I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. That should do it. I finished filling the night sky with white dots that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's very pretty and natural looking. I think it came out better than I expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you going to add the lettering now? Ah, not yet. God, I can keep hitting buttons. It needs to dry first. That's true, but won't that take a while? Well. Perhaps it would be best to leave it here, then have you bring it in the morning. I can do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts. Is that okay? That's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Phew. Uh-huh. You say that like you're glad it's over. Was I wrong to assume that you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? Ah, oh, no, it's not that. I'm just glad that we managed to get everything done. Yeah, that's kind of just a human thing. It's just the feeling of, like getting something done, you know. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Ah. 
So you don't have any time left? I was secretly, I was secretly hoping we would have a little extra time after finishing the work. Well, Nerea thinks to herself. I think it would be too irresponsible of me for of me to wait that much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there would be more time as well. It's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker. No, it's not your fault at all. And the important thing is that we got everything done, right? Yeah. So, I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Doubting all other things, Yuri seems a little too. See, Yuri seems to look a little downcast. I understand why. It sounds like she rarely gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. But that doesn't mean this is the last time it can happen. Once Yuri packs up, I walk. I walk her out to the front door. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem. I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. Well then. Yuri fidgets. You got a nice spinner. <laughs> you know, spin spin. I'll go for a spin. Wait. I can't say that without thinking. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted. Because we can do this again. Whenever you want, you can come over and we can go out somewhere. Or we can go somewhere. Ah, I forgot you don't like going out much. As I stumble over my words, Yuri simply smiles bashfully. Anyway. You know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, Nick. Yuri takes a step closer to me, then briefly squeezes my hand. You're kinda close! Back up a little bit, bud. Just a little bit. Like, like a few thousand feet. You know. I kinda like that about you. Well... How am I supposed to respond to that? But I don't even get a chance to as Yuri suddenly pulls back. Sayori? Eh? Ah. Uh, uh, hi, Nick. Sorry. Just now, we weren't. <laughs> it's okay, Nick. I just stopped by to say hi. Um. Well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, but I'm already on my way to leave. Ah, uh, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry. But we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow, so... So that's fine, right? Of course! Sherry beams. H yeah, so... I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. Yuri hurries! Sherry waits goodbye to her after her. Bye, Yuri! Get out of here! Stop trying to steal my man! Sherry! I thought you didn't want to come over today. <laughs> well... I tried staying in my room. But my imagination is being really mean to me. So I had to come here and see it for myself. Oh god. I don't I don't wanna be with Yuri, I wanna be with Sayori. I didn't have a choice, Sayori, okay. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you're having with Yuri? And how close you got to her? Sayori, I didn't have a choice, okay? It makes me really happy. That you've made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. To start to fall down Sayori's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Nick? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why do you feel like my heart is my heart is big and half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This should be so much better if I could just disappear. Siri, don't say that. It's true, Nick. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your time. You wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica is right. I should just... Monica, what did you say? I want to kill that Monica. Monica? Monica was right about what? Sherry, what I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making out to be. It's something that makes me happy. No. No. I know it's a sad moment, but this is really sweet. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But, but, Siri looks away. <coughs> Sorry, it's a little itchy back here. 
I put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Nick. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Siri? I'm scared that that I might like you more than you like me. No, I love you, Siri. Oh, you're the best. Siri? It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Nick, I like you so much that I want to die. Don't, no. That's how I feel. And, and... That's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt it anymore. I slide my hand on Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my arm. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Ruthlessly, Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings, I know what you need. Mo I know what you need the most right now, and that's what I'm going to give to you, Siri. I love, I love Siri. A lot of people that I saw play this had like a really tough decision here. For me, it's pretty obvious. I love Siri. She's the best. I love you. Huh? Those are my true feelings. So there's no way you could like me more than I like you. I should have realized it sooner. But spending time with everyone at the club, making new friends, and having fun with you every day, it helped me realize that you're truly the most important person to me. That's why I accept any of your burdens. As long as we continue like this every day, with you by my side, then I know we'll both be happy. Nick? Oh, hug. Oh. oh. Suddenly, Siri wraps her arms tightly around me. Nick? Is this really okay? Yeah. I held Siri in my arms and pulled her closer. I'll never have to let go of me again. I love you, Nick. I want to be with you forever. Me too. I feel Siri's grip around me weaken a little bit. What is this? Siri. I'm supposed to be happy right now. I always thought this to be the happiest moment for me. But why? Even now. Why don't the rain clouds go away? They're not going away at all, Nick. It's okay, Siri. It might take some time for things to get better again. But no matter how long it takes, I'll be there every step of the way. That's all that matters right now. O okay. I trust you. Siri and I slowly release each other. So, I guess that makes the festival tomorrow our first date, huh? <laughs> What are you saying? I don't want to think about those things, you know? I want everything to be the same as it always has been. Even if we really are a couple. I don't know if I can handle anything right now. It's really new and scary to me. I understand. We'll go at whatever pace suits you best. Hey, Nick. Sherry gazes at me once again, smiling sadly. Even if I get really, really sad, this is the best thing for me, right? Yeah? I don't really understand what Sayori means by that. Are you saying that this is making you feel sad, Terry? I, I don't know. I don't understand what I'm feeling. It felt like a bunch of thorns when you told me you love me. Well, that's why I trust. I want to trust you. You know what's best for me. Yeah, I do. That's my promise. I say that, but in reality, I've never felt more uncertain when it comes to Terry. I know that I love her and she loves me. But I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if she sh should be doing something more or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. Is that what Sayori meant by not wanting anything to change? I don't know. But I know that I'll give it everything I got. Sayori is the most important person to me. And I'll do whatever it takes to have a happy future with her. Alrighty. Has anything gone into here yet? Oh. What is this little nugget? Come on. What's this? Oh no. Yeah, well, alright, I'm gonna finish out this day. It's not very long. And then I'm gonna end it.
So you guys be warned. It's gonna get pretty sketchy pretty quick. So and that's the start of it, so it's the day of the festival. Of all days I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Terry. But Terry isn't answering her phone. I considered going through her house to wake her up, but I decided it's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. The banner Yuri and I painted is dry, and I gently rolled it up to take with me. She sent me a pleasant text when I me not to forget anything, and I reassured her. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Yuri and Yuri at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Nick, you're the first one here. <clears throat> Thanks for being early. <clears throat> That's funny. I thought at least Yuri would have been here by now. Monica is placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the ones she prepared to have all the poems we're performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. <clears throat> I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. Oh god, no. You'd think that on days this important she tried a little harder. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday. And suddenly I feel awful knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. <laughs> you should take a little responsibility for her, Nick. I mean, especially after her exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know. Monica. Monica. You need to stop. I will fucking kill you. You son of a bitch. Left her hanging. Oh god, you guys are in for a treat. Well, treat. It's pretty awful. What's about to happen? So, yeah, and this game says if you're, un like, on the store page, if it, sa it says if you're under 13, then you probably shouldn't be playing this game. So, I might not watch this. Um, I don't know. But just be warned, okay? Don't, t don't say I didn't tell you to be so. Unless you want to say that he didn't tell you so. But it's wrong. It's a lie. I did tell you so. Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. But I stammer, embarrassed. Did Siri really tell her about that? And tell her about it that quickly? Yeah, she said, oh, I'm the president. You know, makes sense. No, no it really doesn't. That doesn't explain why you would know about that. That we're a couple now? I didn't really plan on bringing it up with anyone yet. Jeez. You don't know the full story at all, so... Don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Eh? Monica. I hate you with a fiery passion of a thousand suns. Okay? Monica, you need to disappear. Real quick. I'm also curious what would happen if I... Because there's a characters folder in here. I'm... I'm curious to know what would happen when I, if I delete Monica's character now, instead of waiting until later. Monica is being as friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a little chilled on my spine after hearing that. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They come out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets laid out on the desk. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. <clears throat> Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognize Natsuki and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flipped to Sarah's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's one that I haven't read before. Oh, God. Um. That's a lot of get out of my head. Get in my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get in my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Jesus Christ. Oh my god. Get in my head before I know right before I do what I know is best for you. Before get in my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Before get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get in my head before I finish writing this poem. But the poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving. Oh god. Yeah, what she said to me, that's Monica, right? Remember? Because she was talking about what Monica said. She was talking about, I should, Monica was right, I should just... And then she didn't elaborate. I think what Monica did is she told her to kill herself. 
because, well, you'll see. Oh god, this is awful. Ah, what is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Nick, what's wrong? Ah, uh, nothing. This poem feels completely different from everything else Sarah's written. But more than that, I, I changed my mind. I'm going to get Sarah, so. Huh. Well, alright. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Monica, you need to shut your mouth. Marco calls that out after me. I quicken my pace. Good, good. Get away from that devil as soon as possible. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help wake her up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told you yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs, and that's what I want to give her. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I opened the door and let myself in. Oh god, Sari? She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. Can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house? Is that really something that a boyfriend... That really is something that a boyfriend would do, isn't it? Oh god, children, look away right now. This is gonna be bad. In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sari's room, I knock on her door. Sayori? Make up, dummy. There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter a room like this. Isn't it kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Oh god, look away. Sayori? Oh god. Oh. Oh, there it is. Oh god. Sayori's character is gone now. Okay, uh, see trace back for details. Let's see if that's in here. Trace back. I'm sorry, but an uncaught exception occurred. We switch top context. Oh, jeez, I didn't break anything, did I? Hold on a sec, I can probably fix this. I think. Actually, you know what? This would probably be a lot easier if I just deleted her. She's the one that's making this so difficult. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, here goes nothing. Oh god, that's Monica talking. Uh, yeah, it's down here too. Oh, Jesus Christ. What the hell? What the hell? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. See, I wouldn't do this. Sari didn't do it, it was Monica. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppress the urge to vomit. Just yesterday, I told Sari I'd be there for her. I told her I know it's best, that everything will be okay. Oh, crap, I forgot. On the thing, doesn't it show like Sari's hands are like bloody or something? So that means she tried to resist against it. Or something. Like, she tried to resist against the rope and she ended up like, tearing up her hands. Something like that. I don't know. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Confessing to her. I shouldn't have confessed to her. Nope, don't worry. It would have happened either way. Well, I guess don't worry isn't the right thing to say, but it would have happened either way. Whether you, In this game, whether you confess to her or not, she still dies anyway, because Monica. I shouldn't have confessed to her. That's not what I say you needed at all. She even told me how painful it is for others to care about her. Then why did I confess to her and make her feel even worse? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. If I just spent more time with her, walked her to school, and remained friends with her like it always has been, then I could have prevented this. Yeah, and I just want to say right now, committing suicide is never the answer. It's never a good option. So, if you're watching this and you're thinking about it, just don't. Just plain old don't. I'll put a link to Suicide Prevention Hotline in the description. But, just, just, just don't. It's, it just makes everything worse. And, there, there's nothing good about it. So, it's just not a good idea. And then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. 
Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. He's gone forever now. Nothing I, can, I do can bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. Oh yeah, it is. But, well actually, we don't get to reset in this, but... It is just a game, so... I had only one chance, and I wasn't careful enough. And I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed for me. And now, I can never take it back. Never, 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 never. <sighs> yep. End. But it's not really the end. So. Oh god, look at the messed up Sayori made of everyone else. Okay, there's all of these. But. Let's start a new one. Oh Jesus. I see an annoying girl running towards me from a distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you never see yourself making today, which kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together. Oh you god, you can hear the music in the background, it's all distorted. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and now I'd get tired of waiting up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just saw an idol in front of the crosswalk and let <laughs> catch up to me. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> this doesn't mean anything to me. It's an ordinary school day like any other. Okay, I'm gonna actually end it here. Because I don't feel like um, getting into more of this right now. I'll leave that till the next episode. But my god, yeah. It's it's starting to get into the, the meat of this game. Like, the actual good stuff. Well, not good stuff as in, like, cool or... Well, I don't know how to explain it. It's not, like, happy stuff like that. But it is kind of cool. So, but yeah. Um... Yeah, that's gonna be it. Um, so when you smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. Um, and I don't know. You can follow me on Instagram, and Twitter if you want to. It's down in the description, along with the game link and the suicide prevention hotline thing, like I mentioned earlier. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be it for today. Um, do I want to do like a really dumb thing like I've been doing? I don't know. I don't have anything planned like that, so I guess just see you guys. <laughs>